Hi, it's Tim Hagen from Progress Coaching, and welcome to another episode for the Coaching Conversations podcast. Now, we are on Stitcher, we are on iTunes, and multiple different channels. Please check us out. Now, one of the things that you'll get out of our podcast episodes is a lot of content, a lot of strategy. It's not fluff, it's not concept. Yet we really want you to engage with the content and let us know your feedback. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. If there's topics you'd love to have us address, we would love to share them with you. Let us know your impact and let us know your feedback. When leaders are faced with running and managing their teams, especially in the workplace, we often have to understand where things start. Yet we also have to understand how we can coach to solidify great teamwork. First, let's start with how teams are formed. Let's say you're a manager, a manager at your company, and they typically will, for lack of a better description, inherent talent. They'll have maybe three or four team members, and they might have to hire two or three team members down the road. And and what happens is, is we have a collection of people that are formed together to do jobs. Now, let's think about this just for a second. Let's think about the interview process. Do we ask questions around, what kind of teammate are you? What do you do as a great teammate? Where do you struggle as a teammate? See, here's the funny thing. If you're a leader and you have six to 10 people on your team, studies show 70% are going to be neutral or actively disengaged. 85% are going to lack self-awareness. Leaders already have it tough. And then what we do is we throw people together of different behaviors, different personalities, different goals, And we say, oh, we've got a job to do, yet we want you to collectively work really well together. That's tough. Now, I'm not trying to oversimplify the discord of a team, yet that is how teams are formed. We hire individuals and we put them on the team. Sometimes we hire people based on the job, the job expectations, the resume, the talent they bring. Yet, do we hire them to fit in with the team? Do we hire them because they're going to be a great teammate? Now, that's how things typically very high level start. Number two, I want you to write this down. There are a number of actions leaders can take to solidify great teamwork, but I'm going to start with the first rule. Do not let work form the relationships. When we have a collection of people thrown together that have to be a team, We typically do so based on the merits of the work, meaning we have work to do. Do we understand each other? Do we know each other? Let me give you an example. There is a process that you can take. And when you think about the first two steps, awareness and commonality, are we even aware of each other? We typically do the onboarding, sit with Bob today, Julie, and, you know, learn the job. But are we aware of her goals? Her hobbies? Does she have a family? We just tend to let that kind of work itself out, right? Yet when we become aware of each other and then we find out that we have some things in common like gardening or beach volleyball or we love to read books or travel to Hawaii, what happens? The walls come down that typically are built when the work is the only thing that drives the work relationship. See, when work drives the relationship, the relationship will feel like work. So, number one, let's understand how teams are formed. Number two, let's facilitate awareness and commonality of each other. Number one, I would encourage all leaders to let their teammates get together, take breaks every two weeks for 15 to 20 minutes, and just update each other on one another's life and share what they're comfortable with. Now, somebody might say, wait a minute, that has nothing to do with work. You're darn right it doesn't. Now, So we have how our team's formed. And then number two, we have awareness and commonality. Then number three, we have something called foundational skills. I would encourage, and this is something we do here at Progress Coaching, fuel people's minds at a foundational level. So let's have a month of active listening. Let's have a month of handling conflict plausibly and professionally. Let's have a month of what does it mean to be a great teammate? Have monthly themes that fuel their minds with actions and activities. Now, I'll give you a little bit of a sales pitch. We have a whole process that does that. 
We have a whole framework where we work with leaders, we coach the leader, we coach the individuals, and we provide foundational skills with a uh, coaching automation platform that we built. But the whole premise is what really causes discord within teamwork? Is it our inability to produce the teamwork at a skill level? Or is it our inability to collaborate and cooperate as good teammates? So number three, you have to have foundational skills. Handling conflict, attentive listening, active listening. Uh, What does it mean to be a great teammate? How to be supportive as a great teammate? We have to fuel people's minds. That's number three. Number four, we have to facilitate as leaders' experiences. And we have to use something called framing. And I'll give you one of the greatest lessons that we teach. At a staff meeting, leaders should sit down and say, Joanne, you know, what did Bill do really well on that project that assisted you? Joanne says something nice. Bill now hears what Joanne says. Guess what happens? It's tough to be negative. It's tough to say, yeah, but he was late on this one project. Now, we know that those things will exist. Yet when you frame out questions, when you use questions that frame out positive responses, it builds momentum within the fiber. Then the leader can say, where do we have opportunities, without mentioning names, to raise our game? And oh, by the way, I'd love to have everybody on a note card write down one thing you individually need to improve to support the team. See, if we don't talk about the team, the team is thrown together around this thing called work. If we don't formate a plan and formulate a strategy and facilitate that strategy through coaching experiences, framing questions, the team tends to evolve based on our ability to bring our skill sets to the team and do the work. Our advice is make sure people are aware of one another, get them to find out where they have things in common. They become more plausible, more likely to be better teammates with one another. Number three, develop the mindset of foundational skills, active listening, engagement, being a great teammate, learning how to handle conflict in the event it arises because it will. And then number four, it's the coaching. What can leaders do? Number one, more than anything, number one, The leader has to coach the individuals based on their motivator. Where do they want to go? See, where leaders get in trouble is they try to motivate based on the job. See, if the only focus that team members have is on the work being done, they will find discord in it. Yet, if you're a team member and you're connecting with your teammates, you become aware of them, you find out some teammates where you have a lot in common with, and oh, by the way, You're prompted at staff meetings to talk positively about one another from your leader. And oh, by the way, every single month you're going through very micro type lessons that fuel your mind to be motivated, a better attentive listener, a better active listener, a better teammate, a better handler of conflict. Guess what happens? We have prepped the mind to continue the teamwork. And it's outside of the actual work. Again, When work drives the relationship solely, the relationships will feel like work. You have an opportunity. And if you are intrigued, fill out a link on our Team to You uh, information gathering form, and we will send you some information on the product. We work with teams where we coach the leader and the individuals. We become a partner to the leader. So if you're a leader, if you're a L&D or human resource professional who has some leaders that need some assistance, this is exactly what this program is about. But again, I go back. We are thrown together based on our resumes, on our individual talents. Number two, where there's awareness and commonality, there's less defensiveness. There's less conflict. Number three, when we fuel the minds of foundational skills, guess what happens? We become better prepped to handle challenging things when the work arises or within the work. And then number four, coaching. Now, this isn't the only thing leaders should coach to, yet coaching individuals to where they want to go. Motivation increases when you have highly motivated employees based on their feeling they're progressing towards an individual specific goal, they become easier to work with. So 
Bring the greatest team you can. Bring the greatest team you can to the front. Bring the greatest team you can to the surface. And it's not solely dependent on doing the work. Good luck. Thank you for listening to another episode of Coaching Conversations by Tim Hagen and Progress Coaching. Now, our company is always coming out with new and innovative solutions to help leaders coach their employees. And recently, we just created a new service called Coach to You, where leaders can pick and choose topics and assign seven to 21 day programs for employees to learn and more importantly, apply actions and then reflect and share what they're going to do going forward as a result of the learning. It's called Coach to You. We're literally bringing coaching to your employees. If you're intrigued, we'll have a link in each one of our episodes where you can get more information. And again, thank you so much for listening to another episode.